Earl Miller's biographical narrative, Ashenaki and Emma Flusher. Earl Miller was born on May 22, 1926. He was enlisted into the U.S. Air Force because he was fascinated with flying. He went to basic training, which is physical training or strengthening training. Earl Miller's basic training consisted of crawling through mud and learning how to handle the men that he was grouped with. During this time in his life, he developed muscle and self-control. The lesson that all men had to learn in the army, according to Earl Miller, was that each man wasn't his own man anymore. He had to follow someone else's orders. He reported that this proved hard for some men because they thought of themselves and their own desires. Mr. Earl Miller stated that it did not take him long to realize that he was not his own boss anymore. After basic training ended, he had several choices to pursue in the military, an engineer or mechanic, an aircraft pilot, and many more. At first, Earl Miller wanted to be a pilot. He wanted to fly. Unfortunately, there were not any schools open for becoming a pilot at this time. They were all full. Earl Miller had missed his chance of becoming a pilot, so instead he focused on becoming an aircraft mechanic. He moved to Amarillo, Texas for training on becoming an aircraft mechanic. While he was there, Earl Miller learned all about planes and even how to taxi a plane. He was then moved to Seattle, Washington, where he learned how to disassemble, repair, and then reassemble and start a B-29. How Earl Miller got involved with the project he was part of, Operation Crossroads, was accidental. He was classified as a B-29 mechanic, along with a bunch of men. They were supposed to be shipped to Europe for a B-29 repairment group due to the bombardment of Germany. However, they were a day late and missed their flight. The men were then sent to Roswell, New Mexico for the time being until they could find He spent time there preparing ships and planes for the atomic bomb testing. When it came down to the time for the test to be done, Irma said that no one was really worried anymore about the test because everyone knew that no matter what happened, it was going to take place, so there wasn't really a point in worrying about it. Earl Miller was born in a small town called Mount Etna. Earl Miller had a brother and three sisters. His older brother was in the war in Europe. His brother was a tank commander in the Battle of the Bulge. Earl Miller is married and has three children, two boys and a girl. Earl Miller's youngest son decided he was going to get involved like his dad was. Earl Miller tried to talk him into the Air Force, but he couldn't do it. His son wanted to enlist into the Navy. His son spent four years on a nuclear submarine. When his son left the port, he spent 90 days underwater without seeing sunlight. His oldest son was deaf in one year and tried to enlist several times, but they denied him. He made lots of friends during this time. He said coming home and trying to get everyone together was almost impossible, so they wrote to each other often. Life lessons that Earl Miller said he learned was, working on a plane, you have to be extremely careful where you spend your time. When it came to the radiation that came from the explosion, Earl Miller said that the radiation was the worst part of the atomic test. He said that he was as well as everyone that was there were exposed to atomic radiation. Earl Miller today still goes to the hospital as a result of the radiation that he was exposed to. When he got home after his time, he had two tests that they had to do. They had to do two complete body tests to see whether the radiation that he absorbed was dangerous and how long it was going to hang on, which they still do not know today. He said that many of the explosions that occurred were not above water. The majority of the explosion that happened were underwater. When an explosion happened underwater, there was little radiation that formed, 
The radiation was controlled or held underwater so that you couldn't see it. He said as the bomb exploded and the pressure left the clouds that this would happen to the clouds, which is almost an impossible photograph. The photos were taken underwater to see how high the water would go and how high the radiation would go, as well as how high, how far the radiation and the explosion itself would expand was most important. The radiation broke up into smaller parts itself and would simply float away in the water. The water would expand from the explosion, which caused the water to loop like a wave. These waves went on for hundreds of yards, sometimes miles, until the pressure would drop far enough so the water could drop. Some, t some of the waves would pass over on Earl Miller's side so he could see everything happening. Some of the waves came over on his side and passed over him just like it did anything else. Earl Miller was actually proud of it. The first explosion that occurred was on Monday and the second on Tuesday depending on the weather. Earl Miller says if all of these pictures were in color, it would make a greater difference. But they claimed that they did them a favor with the pictures that they took. The radiation coming off directly off the mountain was treacherous. It killed anything in sight. It killed the vegetation that was there. Earl Miller had to load several thousand cameras and fasten the cameras to the planes so that the cameras could take pictures of the bombs and their explosions in mid-air. This included all types of cameras, high-speed cameras, low-speed cameras, colored cameras, and any type that was available and was being, was being used. These cameras were mounted inside of the planes that would fly over where the bombs exploded. Someone would be in the plane taking pictures, and all of this happened within split seconds apart from each other. Then afterwards, cameras had to be dismounted and they were then separated. Later, the films with all of the explosions were sent away to laboratories so that they would be processed. Mr. Earl Miller was released to go back home. He reports it was he reports it as being the easiest thing he has ever done. He taught car and airplane mechanics at a trade school after his time in the military. Mr. Earl Miller, thank you for giving us the honor and allowing us to conduct this interview with you.